efficiency, accountability, and responsiveness of the Uganda's public sector. And of course, our commitment reflects our dedication to improving the quality of governance and public service delivery across the entire nation. The vision of the ministry is to have a public service that is affordable, that is efficient and accountable in steering rapid economic growth and social transformation. And as our mission uh, as public servants is to provide human resources, policies, management systems, and structures for an effective and efficient service that facilitates national development. These are the broad uh, uh, ideas that we have as the vision that we have at the Ministry of Public Service. But there are uh, strategic objectives. One of them is to strengthen accountability for results across the entire government and also to show responsiveness to citizens' needs in the public service performance management system. The other one is to streamline government structures and systems for efficient and effective service delivery to facilitate attainment of the national development agenda and to strengthen the human resource management function across government institutions for improved talent management in the public service. And finally, to improve operational efficiency and effectiveness of the Ministry of Public Service. Now, as the Ministry contribute to the theme, ensuring justice and equity, and the sub-key results, areas of reforming the public sector for service delivery, and fighting corruption under the NRM manifesto. And of course, the achievements, the pledges are detailed below. Now we have thematic areas. One is creating jobs and wealth for all Ugandans. Now the manifesto pledge or commitment is to coordinate government agencies to eliminate duplication of roles. So we have the progress, what we've done so far. We have indeed coordinated government agencies and currently uh, the legal framework for these agencies. We have 40 bills that give effect to the approved structures under the uh, RAPEX, uh, that is uh, the either reduction, mainstreaming, and even abolishing some of these agencies which have outlived their usefulness. These were submitted to Parliament for legislation under this theme. And out of the 40 bills that were submitted, 34 have been passed by Parliament and 21 have been assented to by His Excellency, the President. And uh, then the other sub-theme uh, is reform government bureaucracy to ensure effective implementation of our programs. And the rider is that the days of slow implementers of our good programs and plans are numbered. So we have done a number of things in this line. One is the business process reengineering, <coughs> uh, so that we can 
uh, shorten the time taken uh, to complete government business. The system's review and re-engineering for the service delivery process under RAPEX are planned for July 2024 to June 2025. And I can say they are on course, they have started. This is to address issues of red tape and bureaucracy that are prevalent in the mainstream public service. The job evaluation has been carried out under RAPEX with an ultimate objective of harmonizing pay across the service based on equal work for equal pay and fair remuneration for all government employees. And this is ongoing. The other one is reform government bureaucracy to ensure effective implementation of programs and of course uh, this is the same thing, um, but we are also now looking at uh, uh, human capital. We are trying to minimize human to human contact in the delivery of services. Now this falls within the broad spectrum of human capital management system. Government has implemented an integrated Human Capital Management System, the HCM, which automates human resource management functions. To date, the Ministry of Public Service has completed the Human Capital Management rollout and go live in 210 ministries, departments and agencies and local governments under phase one and phase two. The human capital management has contributed to timely payment of employees and access of employees and retirees on the payroll. And of course, the level of training has been done uh, for the handlers of that system. Now, the other sub-theme uh, is again, human, uh, minimizing the human-to-human -human contact. We have established the program of service Uganda centers. Um, what do I mean by service Uganda centers? Government has established six pilot service Uganda centers in Entebbe, Kasese, under the Ministry of Public Service, the headquarters here, Jinja, Arua, and Hoima. What are these centers? This is just a, a one-stop center where all or most of the uh, frequently uh, sought services are provided in very short time in one place by the entire team of public servants uh, from the various sectors. We have also planned to establish 19 centers in all. These will be regional service Uganda centers, strategically aligned to the traditional uh, cadastral zones uh, of the, uh, you know, the, the, the pre-independence or the early independence Uganda of the 60s. Uh, these actually uh, include Kampala for the central area, Jinja, Iganga, Tororo, Mbale, Soroti, Moroto, Lira, Guru, Arua, Ajumani, Hoima, Masaka, Mbarara, Rukungiri, Kavare, Kamwenge, Fort Porto, and Mubende. Now this reform rides on an integrated service delivery model on the one-stop center where a variety of public services are provided under one roof and in a single space. The people come, get the service they need and go away very quickly. 
without running up and down or being told to come back the next day or next week or the officer is not around or that uh, you know he has gone for lunch come back at three o'clock when you come back at three o'clock you just find a coat and the officer is not there so the um uh, the service center for hoima was launched in a colorful ceremony and of course in this we have partners who have assisted us and we have looked around among the neighbors they, are, they have a similar thing in kenya they have the hudma and in tanzania and of course we also interacted with our uh, partners in estonia and azerbaijan the azerbaijan team has uh, also in addition uh, pledged to provide us with some of the other requirements that make uh, a service center run very well and effectively. Now, in pursuit of minimizing human to human contact, we have also developed the electronic document and records management system. Now, this has been done by the ministry with the support of the Ministry of ICT and National Guidance, and uh, this has been developed. It is an integrated electronic document and records management system with an end-to-end -end business process for records and information management in the entire public service. Now, this electronic document and records management system has been rolled out to five ministries, departments, and agencies. The Ministry, of, the Ministry of Public Service, the Ministry of ICT and National Guidance, the Ministry of uh, Trade, Industry and Cooperatives, and uh, the Uganda Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority, and the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. So documents and managed and transmitted and so electronically. We don't have to have a small boy running around carrying documents and pleading, please, this document is very important, put it on top of the file so that when the big man comes, you know, looks at it before when he's still fresh. No, just electronic, that's it, and that's it. And the document arrives in time and it's attended to in time. We have also, because of some of the challenges that we have, the inspection on the ground and all this eye-to-eye uh, -eye contact, we have developed the e-inspection, the electronic inspection as well, you know, uh, so that uh, when we are coming to inspect you, you don't have to, to prepare uh, a goat or something, you know, to meet and greet inspectors. Hey, no, it's not necessary. Hey, why should you prepare a goat? Hey, or, uh, you know, ask these people to stay, to stay somewhere in a hotel for about 30, 40 minutes, buying time such that when they get there, they are already too late. They can't see what you have. They can't see the mistakes. And they simply endorse that you're doing a good job. So we have developed this uh, electronic inspection tool to be used in the inspection of ministries, agencies, and local governments. Now, this tool has been rolled out across 30 votes, and this has reduced turnaround time for carrying out inspections, nationalization of money consuming agencies, and restructuring government to eliminate agentification of government and, and duplication and all the attendant evils. Yes, that has been embarked on, as I remarked earlier. Yes, that the legal framework uh, has actually been worked out, and most of the laws have been passed by Parliament. The majority, a few of them now, are just waiting uh, assent from His Excellency the Government, the President. Um, the only six bills that are pending legislation. And out of this, government is going to realize a saving of 906 
billion seventy seven uh, nine hundred and six point seven seven billion shillings and of course we are going to incur a payoff one payoff expenditure of two hundred and twenty nine point five nine billion shillings to cater for gratuity pension and uh, those attendant severance package uh, requirements to the staff who will be affected during the implementation process. Um, and there are not very many. Fortunately, this uh, reorganization has not affected many members of staff, which is very good. It has been done with a human face, and we maintain this right from the start. We are also in this going to incur one time of expense, which is quite hefty, 196.744 billion shillings for the Uganda National Roads Authority. You know, you can see. And again, not many people from UN UNRWA are going to be affected, but you can see how much money is going to be paid for to them which is almost as much as the money that is going to be paid to the entire group that has been affected by rationalization. So you can see uh, this, how restructuring is going to help us to be uh, very frugal and uh, cost effective. Now, um, we also embarked on pay reforms for civil servants to improve implementation and discipline. In fact, as of July 2024, government has allocated 2.2 trillion Uganda shillings towards the enhancement of salary. Uh, and this is significant. It is significant because the salary bill, you know, has been improving. It has been improving, it has gone high over the years when you co compare. And um, 60,077 public officers, excluding the Uganda People's Defense Forces currently, and 77% of their approved long-term pay targets. 77%. And this is important. Uh, when I remember my school days as a teacher, if somebody earned 75%, he would be in distinction, <laughs> distinction <laughs> one, you know, or distinction two. So distinction was really high mark. So as we talk now, uh, these civil servants uh, got a salary of up to 77% of their long-term pay target. And uh, a total number of 126,000 uh, 126, uh, public servants have been enhanced since the financial year 2017-2018. And um, we have also teased out among the public servants, uh, the scientists. The scientists, because of their strategic importance under this theme of creating wealth, of creating jobs, and of making sure that there is discipline and people serve very well. Now, the scientists uh, have been teased out and they are getting 100% of their approved basic pay targets. And this was achieved uh, in the financial year 2023-2024. And scientists across the service, it's across the service, it's not only in education, but across the service. Now, the other manifesto uh, regarding pay uh, commitment is that we should continue to progressively enhance salaries and improve other living conditions, particularly staff accommodation for teachers, for instance, for health workers, as the economy improves. Now, 
the progress in this that in financial year 2022-2023, Uganda shillings, 884.648 billion was provided for enhancement of scientists in the mainstream public service, staff accommodation for teachers, that is progressively being addressed as the economy improves. Something is being done. Yes, progressively. Um, then we are also required to continue to enhance health workers' salaries and other benefits as the economy expands and generates more revenue. In financial year 2019-2020, Uganda shillings 195.525 billion was provided to cater for health workers, the judicial officers, the legal professionals under the DPP, legal professionals in the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, teachers, the teaching and non-teaching staff of public universities, and the deputy um, um, uh, permanent secretaries uh, and uh, uh, those ones who are work in the service commissions, public service commissions. In financial year 2021-22, Uganda shillings 134.9 billion was provided for enhancement of lunch allowance for health workers. I think you recall uh, this was a somewhat controversial matter and we were actually in this hall uh, when these issues were presented and then it was agreed, yes, it's important, uh, the lunch allowance and the internship allowance, all these things must be looked into and money was provided. Government has progressively provided money for recruitment of health workers. The demand provides money for salary enhancement notwithstanding. In the financial year 2024-25, Uganda shillings 25.44 billion has been provided for the recruitment of health workers. And as we talk now, actually the recruitment is ongoing. So the staffing level as at the financial 2023-2024 for health workers in local governments stood at an average of 87%, while the one for regional referral hospitals was at 62%. We are moving. Yes, we are not yet there, but we are moving. We are moving. And uh, yes, under this, uh, the thematic area of delivering education and health and water, we were tasked to ensure that physical exercise and physical exercise days are revived in schools, in institutions, workplaces, and nationally. You see, so that at least we have national fitness, and if possible, we establish uh, national fitness days. Yes, the Ministry of Public Service has developed an employee wellness and health management framework for the public service. This one is there. And in this framework, uh, physical exercise is provided for, Employee screening is provided for, breastfeeding, corners are provided for, among other. And of course, uh, this will enhance employee health and productivity. And uh, well, we have not carried out an assessment yet, but uh, what has so far been done shows that indeed that goal of uh, employee fitness, employee health uh, is being realized. And you can see, um, I'm glad to say that uh, many MDs have responded uh, positively, very well. Sometimes you see on Fridays, on Wednesdays, uh, employees are running around in the town, uh, others are walking, but others are carrying out exercises in their compounds, uh, which is uh, very good. And of course, the Ministry of Public Service 
has taken the lead, as you can see. Um, so, uh, in fact, uh, the days of those comfort stomachs among public servants are gone, they are numbered. Uh, you don't see many of the, such stomachs these days, uh, which is very good. Now, the other area that we are focusing on uh, is ensuring justice and equity. And the commitment is to recruit more judicial and other officers to fill the established positions in the judiciary. The progress is that government has over the years provided funding for both enhancement and recruitment of officers of the Directorate of Public Prosecutions and the Judiciary. And as a result, staffing levels for judiciary increased from 31% before 2021 to 42% in 2023. The other commitment is to restructure and strengthen the government's systems to synergize efforts, remove duplications, and align under a program approach. The progress so far is that the review of the legal framework, all those 40 bills that give effect to the approved structures and RAPEX are going, and uh, with 34 bills that have already been passed by Parliament, the approved structures for nine ministries and 24 agencies have already been implemented to remove duplications and align under a program approach. The process of systems review and re-engineering is ongoing because these structures uh, are living, they are dynamic. You know, you make an improvement today, it works, then it falls becomes old, you have to make some improvement. So it's gone going. The other commitment is to do with the public sector training to improve relevance and impact. And here we have done some good work as well as the Ministry of Public Service. We have built capacity of 5,003 individuals and of these, 3,129 are male and 1,874 are female in different disciplines offered by the Civil Service College at Jinja. We have commenced undertaking tracer studies to assess the utilization of learning to improve service delivery. We have developed a capacity building framework and plan outlining essential training requirements of at individual and organizational levels. We have established partnerships with organizations such as Enable, the Belgian Technical uh, Cooperation, the United Nations Development Program, and the Institute for Corporate Governance Uganda to deliver customized training sessions in vital areas, such as the local economic development, strategy planning, development and management, project planning, management, resource management and mobilization, strategic leadership and management, human resource management, gender and equity responsive planning and budgeting, as well as ethics and corporate governance. Training policy is under review to provide for a training framework. Um, you can see some of those who have undergone the training. And uh, even uh, issues to do with the mindset change and patriotism, these are also being handled in the training policy. Uh, so that um, uh, uh, we really achieve the manifesto commitment. Now, the other pledge is to introduce timelines in which certain services are delivered, especially application for land titles, passport, driving permits, trading license, 
that kind of thing, even including uh, uh, application forms for uh, application into universities and what have you. Now, we have worked on service delivery standards for eight key service delivery areas, namely education and sports, water and environment, works and transport, social development, health, lands, agriculture and animal industry and fisheries, public sector management, and these have been developed, they have been costed, and compiled into a compendium uh, and disseminated. And the standards contain minimum levels of service in terms of time, cost, quality, quantity, and coverage. So once this has been done, so it's now easy for someone offering this service uh, to know what time is needed, how long should uh, this service take, and so on. It's now easy. It's not left uh, to the whims of an individual. A compendium of costed standards translated. This has been translated into six local languages, which include Luo, Lubara, Swahili, Runyakitara, Luganda, Ateso, and uh, the dissemination of the costed translated service delivery standards will be completed before the end of the financial year 24-25. This is not only for those who are offering a service, but those who are receiving a service. They should know what uh, to expect, and once they know, then they demand that that service should be provided and in that particular time. And um, of course, uh, the dissemination has involved even the highest uh, principles in the country, you know. So it's not something small that has been done by the Ministry of Public Service, but it's uh, really the entire government that is concerned and attaches a lot of significant importance uh, to it. Now, we committed to use technology to track the attendance of teachers, health workers, and the distribution of medicines and drugs in government health units in order to curb absenteeism and theft. Now, the attendance, for instance, of teachers to duty is tracked using teacher effectiveness and learn achievement system, the teller, in 20 districts under the office of the Prime Minister. And then that of health workers, government has successfully rolled out the wall mountable biometric machines that automatically link to the integrated human resources information system at the Ministry of Health headquarters to 16 regional referral hospitals, which include Jinja, Masaka, Mbale, Kayunga, Lira, Mubende, Hoima, Kavale, Guru, Fort Porto, Arua, Entebbe, Moroto, Soroti, Mbarara, and Yumbe. So work has started, and funds permitting it will be rolled out to the rest of the units so that at least tracking is possible, you can see what is going on, and take immediate action if things are not going the right way. Um, we have also um, looked at electronic attendance rolled, to, rolled out to two national referral hospitals, i.e. the China Naguru Friendship Hospital, National Referral Hospital uh, at Nakawa, and Kirudu National Referral Hospital. And e-attendance is also being implemented in one general hospital, that is Igang. Electronic attendance is also being implemented as a partner-led activity in some districts without biometric machines. Data is summarized from daily registers and entered into the IHRIS at the end of every month, and later reports are generated for decision making. Now, 75 districts are actively using this method. The pledge on pay reform and salary enhancement 
to remove injustices and address compens the compression ref ratio in salary scales. I've mentioned this uh, uh, above, but uh, here I would like again to emphasize that Ministry of Public Service and Government progressively enhancing the salary of public officers. In financial year 2024-2025, the salary of Uganda police force, the Uganda prison services, and lower ranks in the UPDF, and indeed in the intelligence services, this has been enhanced by 40% of the approved long-term pay targets. Yes. Uh, there have been a few grumblings, particularly in the police, in the lower ranks, that maybe the enhancement had not gone up to what we were expecting. There's some good news, uh, which shows that really we are committed. Yes, at the time that, uh, that uh, was announced, actually finance had released less money. But as we talk now, finance has, released, uh, uh, has approved the money that we need to go up to that level. So there should be no uh, grumbling, and uh, that does not mean that we are not uh, committed to really steadily improving the pay of the public servants. We are also in the process of establishing a National Emoluments Review Board.